Hello everyone, Adrian Antolak from CG Hacks here. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to create carpet materials in Cinema 4D Redshift. Let's get into it. So let's start from clicking this button here to open Material Manager. Let's click and hold this plus icon here, go to the materials and carpaint. We're gonna use this material to create our carpaint material. Let's apply it to our model, like so. And in here, in the node editor, we're gonna do most of the stuff in this node here. So first, let's go to the base layer diffuse tab for this material and change the weight to one. And let's change the weight to zero in other tabs like specular, metallic flakes, and clear coat. This way, we'll only see the base layer diffuse on our render view. And we can focus on that for now. Uh, we're going to change the color to really dark red on the edge file of color, like this. We're also going to change the pigment color here to slightly darker as well, like 25%. And usually in a base layer diffuse, you want to go with darker colors than in a base layer specular. Speaking of which, we're gonna go to the base layer specular and change the weight to one. So we move to the next layer. And let's change the color here to red. So here we'll have really uh, saturated and bright color here. I'm just gonna slightly lower the saturation here so it's not fully 100%. I'm gonna change the BRDF model to GGX. And I'm gonna change the value of glossiness to 0.7. Also in Fresnel control, we're gonna change the facing reflectivity to 0.5 and perpendicular reflectivity to 0.5 as well. And now even more, we can see this effect going on here. For the metallic flakes, I'm gonna change the camera so we can see exactly what's going on. And we're gonna enable the metallic flakes. And first thing you will notice is the lack of the flakes, even though we changed the weight to one. So I'm gonna change the density to one in definition at the bottom here. I'm gonna also change the variation to really big value because right now when you drag this slider all the way up, it's only one, but you can actually type in more than that. So on 10, we will have way more flakes visible, but there's still nothing really happening here. Uh, so let's maybe change the glossiness to 0 0.7. So it's a bit more reflective. We can see a bit of dots here, but probably because of YouTube compression, you will not notice it anyway. So I'm going to change the scale to 0 0.02, to make it a bit more, a bit bigger. You should notice it now here slightly. But it's still not enough. And we already touched few, already few settings here. So the thing is, even though I said it's like opacity in weight between zero and 100% on one, you can actually put it way higher and get really weird result. Like if I go to 100, it will start almost glowing. But if you go like 15, we have really nice visible flakes right now. Maybe it's a bit too much, so I'm going to go to 10 in weight. And now we really start to see the flakes on our carpet material. I'm just going to change a few things in the Fresnel control as well. So for the facing reflectivity, I'm going to go with 0 0.9. So it's a bit more visible on parts that are facing our camera. And on perpendicular reflectivity, which is the opposite, I'm going to change it to 0 0.1. So it just gives a bit more shape to whole car paint material. And in the curve factor, I'm going to change it to 0 0.4. So we can actually give a bit more balance to this uh, difference in between. And now we can see this really nice flakes effect here. If I change the scale to like 0 0.1, we can we'll really see those big flakes going on. But yeah, I'm going to change it to 0 0.02 because it's a bit too much on 0 0.1. But go with whatever works with your scale and model. Let me change the camera back to our previous one. And as you can see from this distance, you can't really see much difference between uh, zero in flakes and 10. 
It's just a really subtle effect that will mostly be visible from close up. But also there is decay distance. So let me change it to 2500. Now we can actually see it way better than previously. It's basically at which point you will stop seeing the flakes to prevent hot pixels and overall noise. It's just kind of like optimization thing as well. Now let's move to the clear code reflection tab here. And let's change the weight to one. And we're pretty much done. But we can make the clear code a bit more realistic. So let's change the glossiness to 0 0.96 just so we can have a bit more roughness in it, so it's not completely perfect. We can change the BRD of model to GGX, and in facing reflectivity, I'm gonna change it to 0 0.08, just so I can have a bit more brighter reflection here. And I think that's it here. We can actually now drop a bit of bump to this clear code. Let me change the camera again. We're gonna focus on this part here. And we can see there is no bump going on right now. So let's add it. And in Notator, you can just click C and type in Maxon to get the Maxon noise here. But we need to also convert it. So let's do it again. So click C, type in bump and add the bump map. Let's connect the output from the Maxon noise to the bump map input. And output from the bump map Let's connect to the car paint shader. So just drop it here. Go all the way down to advanced, bump, and bump up. Right now it looks completely off. And that's because, first of all, in car paint shader or car paint, car paint node, in advanced, we need to disable base layer bump mapping. So let's click on it. This will prevent from distorting anything below the clear code. So it will just affect only the clear code, which is what we're going for, but it's still too intense. So let's try to fix that by changing a few things here. So in the bump map, in the height scale, we're going to go with 0 0.1 for now. This will already make it a bit easier to look at, but let's go to the max on noise and change the scale. So we need to go to the input here and we can change the overall scale by just lowering the number. So let's try 0 0.01. And I think that could work, but our height scale in the bump map is still too high. So let's change it to even lower value. Let me change the max on noise slightly by giving a bit bigger scale here. This could work actually. Yeah, let, let's, let's leave it as it is right now. I'm just going to change the height scale in the bump map again one more time to lower value. Something like this. Maybe I will go back to the max noise and change the scale here just a bit as well. And I think that's really cool detail right now. We can see this realistic bump to it. You can also change in the max noise here type of the noise to whatever you prefer. I think the normal one is pretty good, but you can mess with this as well if you really go for close-up shots. Now let's go back to the previous camera I have here. Okay, so that's how you make the carpet materials in Cinema 4D Redshift. But we can do a few different variations of it. So maybe let's try to make glossy carpet. So we need to disable metallic flakes and base layer specular for it. And we're going to just adjust the colors in base layer diffuse for it. So let's go with really bright color here. Maybe slightly less saturated. Let's see. Something like this. And then here we go with like maybe 50. I think that's a bit too much. So maybe 20. This is more like it. And we're going to change the curve factor to maybe 0 0.6. And that's pretty much it. Now we have glossy looking carpet material. Let's try something else. Maybe matte. So let me revert here to the previous settings we had. Let me refresh it here. So for the mat, we will just change the glossiness in a clear code reflection. So 0. Point, let's see, maybe 6. This is looking pretty good. And we can disable the metallic flakes as well if we want to, depending on uh, what kind of material you're going for. And in the base layer specular, we're going to change the glossiness to 0. 0.5 maybe. Let's try 0. 0.6. 
This is looking good. I think that's it here. Let me see. I'm going to change the saturation here to 100 to have a bit more saturated look. So yeah, that's how you make the matte material here. And again, we can enable the metallic flakes if you want to. And maybe lower glossiness of it. So 0 0.6. What else can we do here? We can go with like a chrome carpet material. So we're going to change the clear code reflection back to 0 0.96. For the metallic flakes, we're going to disable it completely. In the base layer diffuse, we're going to change it to black in both cases. And in the base layer specular, we're going to change it to maybe like 0 0.9 in glossiness. And we can change also the facing reflectivity and perpendicular reflectivity to 1. And yeah, that's it here for the chrome-like looking car paint. We have now this really cool saturated. Maybe I can actually take away some of this saturation so it's not this intense. So yeah, we can see this really nice highlight from the base layer specular and the clear coat helps it uh, just maintain the really white reflection in the middle. Like if I change it to one now, you can see this really clean looking reflection. So. That's how you make this material. And I think the last one I will cover will be opalescent material. So let me try to revert all of the settings here. So in a base layer specular, it was 0 0.5 in both facing and perpendicular reflectivity. The glossiness was 0 0.7. And the base layer diffuse had a bit of color, but I'm going to actually need to input there something else. So I'm going to click C and add Fresnel. And I'm going to click C again and add Ramp. I will connect the output from the Fresnel to input of the Ramp. So general input, alt input. And output from Ramp, I'm going to drop to the Carpaint shader and connect it to the base layer diffuse pigment color. And Connect it again to base layer diffuse edge fall off color. So basically, we change those two colors we were adjusting before to the one uh, gradient here, which is also helping you see what exactly the blending between those two colors looks like. And in my opinion, it's easier to play with this first one here because you have just a bit more options here. But yeah, first let's change the color here to really bright red and really bright green just so we can see the difference and we can still unload it so that's how it looks here and in the fresnel here we want to change a few things so i don't want to use index of refraction so i'm gonna uncheck this i'm gonna change the curve factor to 0 0.5 let's say for now and i will right click on the black box here in the facing color and set swap color and I will click right on the perpendicular color white box here and swap colors. It's just faster this way if you have specific values instead of going in, uh, copy the color, etc, etc. You can just swap them to, together. And now we can see exactly what's going on here and I think it's actually a really decent balance. Maybe I'll like slightly change it to maybe 0 0.4. Maybe something in between, like 0 0.45, like this, is really good. Uh, I'm going to disable the solo node on the ramp here. So we kind of have the opalescent look right now. Actually, if I get rid of the weight in the base layer specular, we kind of get a glossy look. So you can try that as well, if you are into glossy opalescent material. But it was just an example with these two colors. So I'm going to change red to blue, to like 10% maybe. And green, I'm going to change to red and 25% on brightness. That's going to be the base. And I'm going to select those two nodes by holding and dragging the box here over both of them. I'm going to Ctrl C. Ctrl V, 
paste it, or you can just select both of them, right click, duplicate. And I'm gonna just connect this output from this ramp to our car paint material and base layer specular general color. This is where we're gonna connect it to. And then here, like uh, as you can see here, now we change this one color to a Fresnel, which gives us way more option than just one color. But first let's change the weight to one. We can start seeing those reflection here, but we need to make it way more brighter. So let's do it. So let's change the blue to fully 100% brightness and the red to fully brightness as well. And I think I need to restart the render view because something is a bit sluggish right now. Yeah, and we get this really clean opalescent looking uh, carpet material right now, which looks awesome. We can enable the flakes because the color will be taken from, from the diffuse and specular. We can just leave it on white and it will just absorb the color from the previous two layers. But if we want to make it way more saturated, we can, of course, just duplicate it here and connect it to metallic flakes, reflection, general color. And we'll just give a bit of boost to the color. Like we can see here, it's a bit more vibrant than before, but it's a minor difference. And that wraps up this tutorial about different types of carpet materials and Cinema 4D using Redshift. To speed up your workflow, check out our CG Hacks pack of 140 carpet materials. Link is in the description below. Have fun, be creative, and see you in another tutorial.